Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's CITI program webinar. Today's topic is IRB review of observational research and will be presented by Dr. Eileen Willits from the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Just a few quick notes. This webinar will be recorded and the recording will be available on the CITI program's website. This webinar is for educational purposes only. It's not designed to provide legal advice or legal guidance. You should consult with your organization's attorneys if you have any questions or concerns about relevant laws and regulations that may be discussed in the webinar. In addition, the views expressed in the webinar are solely those of the presenter. Now, let me tell you about today's presenter. Dr. Eileen Willits is a certified IRB professional. She's IRB chair at, with the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. She's an associate professor in the Department of, Vi of Environmental Medicine and Public Health an associate professor in the Department of Global Health and Health Systems Design at Mount Sinai, and an adjunct associate professor with the Clarkson University Mount Sinai Program in Bioethics. As an IRB chair, Dr. Willits provides extensive regulatory support and research ethics training to investigators, study personnel, and medical and graduate students. She also works with IRB leadership to develop institutional research policy. Informed consent, citizen science, and global health challenges rank at the forefront of her current research interests. Now we can move on to the learning objectives for this webinar. They address a number of aspects of observational research studies and how IRBs typically review such protocols. This webinar will identify the key characteristics of the main types of observational research studies, cohort studies, cross-sectional, and case control. The, the webinar will enable you to recognize study risk in relation to the different types of observational studies, as well as understand the kinds of study bias associated with each observational research design and apply the regulatory review criteria to observational studies for effective protocol review. And also, in addition to these four stated learning objectives, as a result of developing this presentation, we've decided to add two additional learning objectives in blue, and these will expand and add depth to our discussion of IRB review. Let's begin with an overview of observational research. I'll briefly describe observational research study designs and touch upon their strengths and weaknesses, including their susceptibility for bias. I'll then discuss how IRBs consider the primary types of observational studies with respect to the risk of subject harm. This risk determination is what drives the type of IRB review process, whether a study can be determined exempt from IRB review or be reviewed by the expedited review process. These are the basic domains of observational study design, cross-sectional studies, case control studies, retrospective cohort and prospective cohort studies. Each type of study has its own specific design elements related to the timing of assessments and sampling of study subjects, as well as advantages to study conduct and the validity of research findings. The rigor of each design and its strength of evidence is indicated in this pyramid. It illustrates that the prospective cohort study is considered the most rigorous and definitive design in terms of the findings it can generate, followed by the retrospective cohort study, case control study, and cross-sectional study design. The reasons underlying the strength of evidence categorization are more fully explored in the city program course on observational research. So I will not get into the weeds here and will keep the discussion more about what an IRB reviewer should know regarding the different design types so as to effectively review an observational research protocol. Different observational study designs may be prone to different types of challenges or limitations. These can impact how you approach your IRB review, and that is why it's important to understand which study design is being used within a given protocol. For example, depending on the outcome of interest, a prospective cohort study can take years to conduct and may require a large sample size as some subjects will lose interest in the research and drop out. Some participants may be lost to follow up for reasons related to their health status or their life circumstance. For this reason, IRB professionals should question a seemingly small number of study participants in a longitudinal study. 
Other observational study challenges involve the inability to establish a temporal sequence of events. This problem is specific to cross-sectional studies because all data are collected at a single point in time. And it can be difficult to determine when a given variable precedes another in time. Lastly, because observational studies are by definition non-experimental, randomization or random assignment is not part of the design as it is in many clinical trials. The lack of randomization can yield study groups that are unbalanced. At this time, in the context of the aforementioned types of observational study, let's, let's consider how the IRB professional would approach protocol review. One of the earliest assessments the IRB makes when reviewing a study involving human subjects is whether the research poses minimal risk of harm to subjects or more than minimal risk of harm. Here we see the regulatory definition of minimal risk. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. And many observational studies employ research methods that are considered minimal risk. For example, research involving focus groups, surveys, or structured interviews and studies in which data are collected using, using non-invasive measures, such as blood pressure, venipuncture, or MRI. While one might not consider observational research as having a high degree of physical risk, given that by definition, it does not involve an intervention, the risk of other types of subject harm is possible and should be considered during the course of IRB review. If we consider the risk of psychological harm, a cross-sectional study involving an in-depth interview in which study participants are asked to recall traumatic events, for example, domestic violence, can potentially cause distress. Asking individuals to participate in research activating such memories should never be undertaken lightly. When reviewing observational research involving sensitive lines of inquiry, it is good practice for the IRB to ask the investigator about the risk of psychological harm and how it might be detected and addressed during the course of the study. Also, consider that observational studies sometimes evaluate risky behaviors, such as unsafe sexual practices or drug use. The identification and disclosure when a study first presents to a human research protection program, the first order of business is to identify the appropriate level of review. Here you can see four options. With respect to option one, a not human subjects research determination, an activity is research not involving human subjects if there is no interaction or intervention with living individuals and neither the provider of the specimens or data nor the recipient can link the specimens or data with identifiable information, individuals, either living or dead. An observational study involving a fully de-identified, publicly available data set with no investigator access to identifiers could conceivably be considered not human subjects research. Similarly, should an investigator be provided with biospecimens with absolutely no links back to the subject, this activity could fit an NHSR classification. However, more often than not, there exists the potential to link data back to the individual and the IRB professional will select exempt category four to best classify the research. Many observational research studies that present to the IRB are no greater than minimal risk and will qualify for either an IRB exemption or the expedited review process. When might an observational study be deemed exempt? Exempt. In summary, there are three main types of observational study designs. Each is non-interventional and characterized by the direction and timing of data collection. The IRB may deem an observational study exempt or elect to review it by the expedited review process or by convened committee. Most, but not all, observational research is considered minimal risk and will undergo expedited review or will fit into an exempt category. IRBs can approve waivers of consent and HIPAA authorization for observational research 
when certain criteria are met. IRBs apply the 111 criteria to the review of observational research. I also invite everyone to review our content offerings regularly as we are continually adding new courses and webinars in various areas of research, ethics, compliance, and professional development.